Good morning, New Holland. Good to see y'all again. Thanks for coming today. I hope that y'all had a, a good week. I hope, hope you have a good week. I thank you for uh, all of you who came last week and the, the remembering service that we had. I hope that it honors the Lord and all the things that we sought to do. It was just uh, uh, on our heart to want to, to do that. It was a tough two years. A lot of people were having to... Um, um, having to go through those times without being able to formally say goodbye to someone. And I just appreciate everyone who did their part and uh, made that a, a special time, and I pray God bless. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 16. Kale, I'm not going to go to 1 Corinthians. I'm just going to go to 1 Samuel. I'm going to cut out a little part of my sermon. We've been in a, a series called God's Amazing Church. We took the time off last week to uh, have our service of remembering. But uh, we've been talking about what a church should be. It's not everything all conclusive, but we talked about a church should be welcoming. We should be the most welcoming group in all the community. Nobody should be more welcoming and more loving and open than the church. We talked about being a gathering together. That's what the church is. It's not the building. It's God's, God's people that come and gather together. And we, need, we are important because God has called us together. And that's the third thing. When we do things, we do it together. What we do, we serve the Lord together. And that's the last thing or thing I'm going to talk about today is what it means to serve the Lord. I think it's important. Uh, Duncan Campbell made a statement that uh, I think is, I, I just love the way it sounds when it comes off my lips. When he says it this way, he said, um, let's fall in Jesus, all, fall in love with Jesus all over again. Let's just fall in love with Jesus like we did in the beginning. Fresh. Let's let the the things that God stirred within our spirit. Let's let him stir them again. The desires that God so desires to do with us, let's pray that he does it again. We want a fresh movement of God's blessings upon us. And that's, that's what it's about today. And when I, when I talk about the church today, and we talk about the church serving, believe it or not, we're going to go to the Old Testament <clears throat> and we're going to find uh, someone in the Old Testament that uh, I believe would have been a good New Testament church member. Because when God looked at him, there were some things that God saw in him. As a matter of fact, in Acts 13, uh, I believe it's in verse um, 22, this is what God's Word says. It says, And when he had removed him, that was talking about King Saul, he raised up for them David as king. That's who we're going to talk about today is King David. <clears throat> To whom also he gave testimony and said, this is what it was said about David. I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Have y'all ever heard that? What a wonderful saying to say about someone that that was a person who was chasing after God's heart. A person who every day wanted to fulfill that simple thing, a person after God's own heart. And then it says this, who will do all my will. Wouldn't that be a great church member? Somebody who just is after God's heart, who's willing to do all of God's will. So that's why we're going to look at King David today as a person who served the Lord, because that's what we need to do today as a church together. And I'm going to pray even from the beginning, that when God speaks in the next few moments, that we would be open for God to do something in our hearts as well. You willing to do that? Let's pray together. Now, Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for this day. I thank you for this people. They are your people. They are important to you. Lord, they're important to us. And Father, you have a call on their life. A call to salvation and a call and a privilege to serve you, my Lord, my God, my Savior, my King. Father, we want to serve you well. 
Lord, we want to serve your church. We want to serve the community. We pray blessings upon this community. Let this community know through New Holland Baptist Church that you love this community, that you want to do a blessings in this community, that you want to save souls, change lives, give them a destination, a new destiny of heaven. Father, that we could come along beside you and join you and work with you and serve our community and serve it well so that they can know you as Savior and Lord. Father, bless us today. Let us hear from you. And, sir, we'll be quick to give you the honor and the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm going to say four quick things today. Y'all know I'm lying when I say quick, right? I'm going to say four things today about what would be a great church member, a church member who serves as we look into the life of David. The very first thing I want you to see is God desires your service. The God of heaven who has everything, if he wanted to create more angels, he could. If he wanted to create a new race of people, he could. If he wanted to create a new planet and populate it, he could. But he gave us this opportunity. He gave us this day. He gave us this work, and he wants us to fulfill it. God desires your service. You're not overlooked. You may think that you are, but you're not. You may say, well, Preacher Brian, he's got a call on his life. Pastor Mark, Pastor Rick, God's got a call on their lives. You may even look at someone else and say, that's a great person of God and, and God's really using them. But you may not think that God would use you, but I want you to hear it very plainly today. You're not overlooked. The eye of Almighty God is upon you as well. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, the people had asked for a king and God had given them King Saul as king. But he had not been faithful to God. And God said, I'm done with him. That's a scary place. When God looks at someone because they don't want to serve him, they don't want to obey him. As a matter of fact, Saul was fine as long as he would do it his way. But the Bible says God refused him. As a matter of fact, Samuel still wanted to, to, for God to work in King Saul's life. And, and, and God basically told Samuel, get over it. I'm done with him. And he sent Samuel to uh, the house of Jesse. And he said, you're going to anoint the new king that is there. Look what it says in verse number 6 of um, 1 Samuel chapter number 16. It says, so it was when they came, that is Samuel and all those that were with him, that he looked at Eliab and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. This was the one that was Jesse's oldest son. He was a big, tall, good looking. I mean, he was a, a physical specimen like none other. And, and, and when Samuel saw him, he said, that's got to be the one. But verse seven says, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical statue because I have refused him. Y'all look up here. That's a lot of what we do. We look at people and say, now that's somebody God could use. We look at someone and say, man, look at all the talent that's in their life. Look at that one. That, that's the one. I mean, not me. No, not me. But look at that one. That, that's a great one. He was tall and broad and strong looking and all that kind of stuff. And David was a teenager, not even six foot most likely, just a young teenage guy. And, and Samuel, the prophet, said, that's got to be the one. God said, no, no. I don't look at things the way you look at things. When we look at things, we see it through our understanding. But when God looks at, looks at it, he looks it through, that, through the divine understanding, the perfect understanding, knowing all the circumstances and being able to see those things perfectly. And God has prepared someone specifically for this work. Look what he says. He says, for the Lord does not see as man sees, for man sees the outward appearance. But look at this. 
But the Lord looks at the heart. Right now in this room, God's looking at hearts. God sees what only you see. God hears your thoughts. He knows your prayers. He knows your desires. The private devotion of your heart is the most important attribute you have. Did y'all hear that? The private devotion of your heart is the most important attribute you have. When you're whispering a prayer, God hears. When you're burdened because God's burdened, He's pleased. When you're looking at things <clears throat> and you're seeing the circumstances of life, and you're saying, oh, Lord, surely something needs to be done there. God hears. God knows those things. God knows your want to. He knows if you love him. He knows if you want to please him. He knows if you want to obey him. That's what matters. But hear this. He also knows when you're faking it. He knows when you're just going through the motions. He knows if you're here today only because it's Sunday. But he also knows if you're here today because you love him. He knows if you're here for your agenda, but he also knows if you're here for his agenda. What everybody else sees doesn't really matter. What everybody else thinks doesn't matter. But what God sees, that's what matters. Your personal prayers, your conversation, when you set your thoughts on Him, that's what matters. God sees you. You're not overlooked. You're not overlooked at all. Hear this and hear this well. Jesse's sons, he was probably happy when it was alive. But God said, no, it's not him. So he brought up the second son. This is the one. It wasn't him. He brought up the third son. It wasn't him. The fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh. Maybe they were perplexed. I thought you said you came to my house to anoint one of my sons as king. Samuel said, do you not have another? Well, the youngest is out there. Look what it says in verse number uh, 11. Samuel said to Jesse, are, are all the young men here? Then he said, there remains yet the youngest, and there he is keeping the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send him, bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. Even David's own dad didn't see it in David. But his heavenly dad saw it. Overlooked, maybe on earth, but not in heaven. God had a plan for him. Jesse had a plan for the others, but God had a plan for David. Number two, God wants you to serve, but number two, you need to be open to the opportunity. I pray that we're open today. Open, just open to the opportunity. <clears throat> Our path of service may not be what you expect, but if it's God's path for you, that's the best place to be. And by the way, there are no coincidences whatsoever. Y'all believe in coincidences? I don't either. Job 14. Y'all remember Job? <clears throat> A godly man. Hadn't done anything wrong. Until God brought up his name in front of Satan. Have you considered my servant Job? And then Satan says, oh, he's only doing the right things because you're blessing him. And God allowed Satan to attack old Job. God, for his glory, allowed Satan to attack Job. You know the things that were going on in his life. But I want you to hear Job's words. When he speaks of God, he says, For now you number my steps. Job said, 
you know the path that you have for me. And I don't like this. It's not, it was unexpected. Everything was good, but then it, it all fell apart. But God, you know what you want in my life. You know the expectations you have for me. And, and you're numbering my steps. Church, listen. God knows you better than anyone else. Before the foundation of the world, God saw you and knew you. He gave you your family. He let you be born during this time. He gave you your DNA. He gave you your talent. He gave you the heart to want to serve, to want to build for God, to want to love Him and please Him. But it's our job to accept and be open to that opportunity. You remember, it was a few months ago, I was speaking about that word opportunity. It's a nautical term. Opportuna. It, it, it means to set your sails so that when the winds come and blow upon you, it will carry you to the expected and desired destination. The winds may come, but unless you have set the sails, how can you get there? God's the author of the wind, but we have to set the sails to catch the wind, to carry us to that place. We need to be open to the opportunities that God's placed before us. Look what it says in verse 14. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Saul's still king. And a dis di distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. Now, get the picture here. God who one time had his hand of anointing on Saul, King Saul. Because of Saul's disobedience, God took his hand of anointing off of him and replaced it with a distressing spirit. Not a coincidence. So now someone makes a suggestion and said, you know what, if, if when Paul gets angry and anxious and he's all wound up and angry and mad if somebody who was skillful at playing could come in and play maybe it would calm his spirit Saul said that sounds like a good opportunity I, I, I'm all right I'm okay with it which is actually verse 17 it, it, it's it's amazing that that Saul was even that open to understand his problem here but look what it says in verse 18 then one of the servants answered and said look I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite I saw him. You think, you think it was strange that God allowed this person in Saul's court to actually know David, to have run across him and know about him. Look what it says. <clears throat> I've seen him. He is skillful in playing. I've heard him. I've heard him play the probably the harp or whatever it was that he was playing. But listen to what else he says. He's a mighty man of valor. So he knew him, he heard him play, but he heard the stories. Maybe he heard the story of, uh, of David standing against the lion or the bear. He knew those stories. A man of war. David had never worn the, the uniform of the armies of Israel, but yet this person knows his resume and calls him a man of war. Prudent in speech. This is a well-spoken young man. He's a teenager, but I'm here to tell you, there's something about this guy. When he talks, there's something about him. He's a handsome person, and the Lord is with him. That's a powerful resume right there. Wouldn't it be wonderful if somebody could see us and say those things about us? Wouldn't it be cool if that was our resume? Well... They went and got David and brought him in. You believe in coincidences? I don't either. But David was getting ready in the pastures with the sheep as God had the plans unfolding before him. If you think that God is only at work 
and what you're going to, what happened yesterday and what's happening to you in the moments right now, you don't understand the hand of God. God is working behind you. God is working with you in the right now. And God has plans for your forward. What you have to do is be open that when God opens that door, you're ready to walk through it. You need to be open. You need to be ready. You get ready ahead of time. You ever seen anybody say, well, I believe I'm going to lose, lose 10 pounds this week. Well, good luck. It's not the way it works, is it? That would be a good amen moment. You ever heard anybody talk about, I'm going to run a marathon. I don't know why any idiot would want to run 26 miles unless something big was chasing them, right? And they want to do it. I'm going to run a marathon. I'm going to do it in two weeks. You lie. You're not going to make it around the block in two weeks. You better start doing now for what you're hoping will come in the future, right? If you're going to run 26 miles, you better start getting after it. It's going to take you some time to get ready. Don't just say, I'm going to do all these things. I haven't prepared for it. I haven't prayed about it. I haven't done anything. I'm just going to do all these wonderful things. If you want to do all those wonderful things, get ready now. And if you want God to use you, you need to get your heart ready now. You need to prepare your heart. What was it Duncan Campbell said? We need to fall in love with the Lord all over again. Wouldn't it be a great time to pray? Has your prayer life eased off a little bit? Is the Word of God as powerful and as alive to you as it ever has been? Is the Word jumping off your page and into your heart? If God wanted to speak, are you, are you ready for it? Be prepared. You know, it's summertime. Last year, during this time, we did a, a teaching, a class called uh, Draw the Circle. <clears throat> and group of people went through it, and some said, you know what, we're going to do this. And they were going up and down the streets and praying over the streets, praying over our community and all that kind of stuff, getting ready for whatever God wanted to do. I taught the class, and I was trying my best to get open to whatever it is that God wanted to do. And I was walking around this church seven times. I'd come early in the mornings, and I'd walk around the church and then God asked me to do something I thought was kind of silly. And I thought about it. And I said, you know, that'd be a good idea. I don't know if it don't make sense to me, but I'd do it, I guess. Next day, I'm walking around it. Brought it up to me again. Two days later, I just... Doing, my, doing what I'm supposed to do and taking my laps around the church praying for God's will to be done. And it's like God, God said, are you going to do it or not? Now, it made no sense to me to go out there, put a cross in front of the church, stand by the road, and just pray for people. But if you're going to do it, you're going to do it. And why in the world am I getting my heart ready for something if I'm not ready for God when, it, when he speaks? Are you ready for God when he speaks? So let me get you to the third point. Say yes before you want God to move. I had to say yes, Lord. So when he said, are you going to do it or not? It wasn't appealing. Sitting out there in the hot sun in August is not the most appealing thing in the world. So I put a tent up out there. Lord blew that thing down. Who would have thought we'd have had two hurricanes in Gainesville, Georgia in the month of August? I got wet, I got hot, I got tanned. And yet, God used that. That wasn't about me. I'm not that smart. I didn't ask for someone to come write an article about me. Matter of fact, it was Ricky Thrasher that told him to go write the article about me or come talk to me. They wrote an article. It went all over. Matter of fact, that particular article for the Christian Index has more hits than any article they've had. 
That wasn't me. That was simply something God was doing. We had people from 23 states watch us. I had people from Minnesota. It, was at the, it hit the state Baptist paper in Minnesota. Who does that kind of stuff? Before God is going to do something amazing, God is wanting to know, are you willing to say yes? What we want to do, and by the way, this is human nature. This is every one of us. We want to hear from God. Then we want to, can I think about it? Can I, can I pray about it? And then we're going to decide if we think it's the right thing to do. All right, let, let, let's, let's just be honest. When I said I was going to go sit out there by the road for the month of August, how many of you thought he's lost it? Amen. I got one back there. Tim agrees with me. I thought I'd lost it too. And then how many of you thought this? Why? Right? Amen. I'm not debating that with you. All I'm telling you is, if you want to have a miracle in your life, you don't wait for the miracle to come and then decide if you want to receive it or not. You prepare your heart beforehand. You say yes beforehand. God who knows all, who's got all these things planned, who's wanting to do so much more than what we are wanting to do, then he'll put into action a miracle. Are you open? Are you ready? Are you prepared? Are you willing to say yes before? All right, get the picture here. We get to chapter 17, 1 Samuel. David's kind of going into Samuel's, uh, excuse me, uh, Saul's, King Saul's court, and he goes home. He sees dad. He's got time off, and he goes home. His dad says, hey, they're having war over there. Take this food and go see your brothers and bring back word. Let me know how things are going. So David did. He went down there and saw what was going on. Yeah, the Philistines were there. And the way they did war was kind of funny. They, they'd all line up on this side, and the other side would line up on that side, and then they'd, get all, they'd yell at each other, ah, kind of like they're going to scare each other. Well, this nine-foot, nine-inch guy walks out, big, broad, thick, ugly, I mean, he's got a great big sword and everybody, when they're yelling, ah, then Goliath comes out and Israel goes, ah, and they run away. And David walks up and he sees this happening. I want you to hear this. <clears throat> Let me turn the page. This is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse number 26. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills the Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? You know what, David? He's not saying, I don't think it's a good idea to fight this guy. I, he's not saying, let me think about it, let me pray about it. He, is, he has already made up his mind. He says, who is this guy? Somebody's got to stand up against him. Why not me? His brothers didn't believe in him. He just ignored his brothers and said, what's going to happen here? Someone heard David talking and went and told Saul, and Saul said, really? You say yes so that... Goliath can fall. So often we get to this story and we just see this little teenager with a sling hit a nine foot giant in the head and he, he's down. Cuts off his head and he's toting this big old head around. Sometimes that's all we see. But God saw it. Who is it that I can bless? Who is it that wants to serve me? Who is it that's willing to do anything? I just wonder if that heart is in the room today. I wonder if anybody is listening and saying, Lord, you can use me. I'm willing for you to use me. 
Lord, no matter what, no matter what, the answer is yes. Lord, please use even me. You've got to be ready. And God did a mighty work. But I've got to say this lastly. God wants you to, God wants some people to serve. God sees you. He knows your heart. God's wanting you to take advantage of the opportunities that he opens for you. If you see the opportunity, are you willing to walk through? Are you willing to say yes no matter what? But listen to me. Leave the results in God's hands. Trust him for the battle. God can do it. God can do it. There's a lot of us have some things that we'd really love to see God do an amazing work in our lives or in our families' lives or in our church or in our community. There's some things that need to happen. We know it. We need to be willing to say, okay, Lord, here am I. Send me. And God may use you like David. God may do an amazing miracle. But I would be wrong I would be a bad pastor if I did not tell you the flip side to this. Y'all listening? Goliath fell. That was an amen moment in the land of Israel. But from that day forward, things began to fall apart for David. You would have thought that he would have been celebrated. Oh, he was there for a moment. He actually led the armies out. Victories came back. I mean, everything seemed to be going well. And then when David was coming back from battle, Saul heard the people singing, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. Saul didn't like that. And the one that he was grateful for, the one that he wanted to honor and bless, became his enemy. And David, who was leading the armies of Israel out against the Philistines and the others, that same army is now coming after to attack David. The hardest, blackest, most difficult time in David's life, the most miserable time, was after Goliath. You need to be a preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying, if you want to be used, if you want to serve, God wants you to serve. God wants you to serve. God needs you to serve. The church is important. But just to understand, miracles may occur, but difficulties may occur as well. I taught of a class of about 40 people, and we were going to talk about how to witness, and we were going to talk about hell. And I told them before we ever started, I said, if we do this, understand this, expect everything to blow up in our face. Expect everything to come back against us. In church, that's exactly what happened. And the people came back to me and they said, Pastor, you hit that right. More, you were exactly right. When we started doing this, everything came against us. Full disclosure, that's what I want to do. Will God bless your service? Yes. Will it honor him? Yes. Will it change eternity? Yes. May it be hard and difficult? It may. Will there be hardships and difficulties and things that you never expected? Possibly. Is it worth it? Amen. Amen. I know one thing about New Holland. You want to serve. We did a survey. Y'all remember the survey? I talked to the deacons about it on May 1st. We're going to have deacons meeting this afternoon. We're going to talk about it again. Lord willing, I'm going to give you the results of the survey next Sunday. We had some questions we asked you. And on the back sheet, I, I, I put a whole sheet of would you like to serve here? 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 According to that survey that we sent out, I, I said, would you like to sing in the choir? According to that survey, this thing ought to be full. 
we had that many people say yes. I just don't know who your names are. Amen. Would you like to serve with the children? Yes. I promise you, if those same people come forward and say, vacation Bible school's coming, we need to serve down there. There's children's church happening right now. We need some people to help do that. All these things are the possibilities that are there. You're saying yes. I'm just asking you, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you prepared? Have you set your heart for the opportunity that God may be opening up for you? Are you willing to walk through that door? Are you willing to walk through that door even if there's a Goliath on the other side of that door? Goliath needs to fall. The miracle can happen if we'll let it. The church is God's instrument to reach the nations. Gainesville needs to know that God loves it. Your families need to know. Your neighbors, your co-workers. There is a God of heaven who loves that needs to hear. And it's not someone else's job. It's your job. It's your time to step up. Don't discount this.